Hi everyone and welcome to today's video where we're going to be doing a guide for France for EU4 1.36 King of Kings. So France is a nation that starts off fractured in 1444 with lots of subjects and lots of cores owned by England over here. But make no mistake, even with all of those things, France is still one of the most powerful nations in the game as it's always been. As France, we do start off with the French feudalism unique tier 1 government reform, which makes us fixed to a kingdom rank, and we have all of these appanage subjects, a unique type of vassal. And then additionally, we have plus 20% income from vassals, minus 50 max absolutism, which is quite a lot, and plus 10% nobility influence, but don't worry, we won't be having that always. France also has some of the best national ideas in the game, starting off with plus 20% national manpower, which is absolutely huge, and plus 1 diplo rep, finishing off with minus 10% development discount, and in the meantime we have plus 10 percent national tax and minus 50 percent war taxes cost then we have a super super powerful national idea right here giving us plus 15 percent morale of armies and plus 0.5 yearly army tradition then we have minus one national rest and plus 10 percent reform progress growth minus 50 percent native uprising chains and plus 50 percent native assimilation minus 10 percent core creation cost and plus five max absolutism plus five percent discipline and plus 15 percent fort defense and plus 50 percent garrison army damage so almost all of our ideas are double ideas here and they're super Super, super strong. France also has an amazing mission tree which focuses on pretty much everything you want to do over as France. This top branch right here starts off by consolidating the region of France and choosing whether to expand over in Italy or in the Middle East. Then other missions over here focus further on Italy and on the Holy Roman Empire and missions down here focusing on France, colonization, conquering Great Britain and Ireland and then these missions down here focus on us developing our nation and getting some very nice unique bonuses such as cannons in 1444. We'll see what that's all about. Of course, as France, you will go on to dominate the entire region of France by taking back all of your cores as England, potentially getting the Burgundian succession and getting all of this land right here that's highlighted for free, PUing or conquering Provence, conquering Brittany, and then after that going on to dominate all of these regions, Britain, Iberia, Italy, the Maghreb, and if you wish to, even become a Holy Roman Emperor and dominate all of the HRE nations as your subjects. So sit back, relax, and learn what you need to do as France. Alright, alright, here we are as France, and even though we have such amazing opening missions, we're not strictly going to be focusing on any of them right now, since we'll pretty much get them automatically done. So no need to do anything specific for your missions, don't worry about that. So, the first thing we're going to do right here is go into our estates and summon the Diet. You can pick whichever agenda is best for you. Then we're going to give the clergy Religious State, Clerical Advisory Council, Religious Diplomats, and Clerical Education. You may notice that the nobility already starts off with French strong duchies, which is basically a more powerful version of strong duchies. But be careful, the nobility is super influential as France. You can see that by the amount of starting land they control. Then we're going to give the nobility primacy of the nobility, increased levies, and aristocratic councillors. Their influence is already dangerous, so be careful. And finally, we're going to give the bourgeoisie land of commerce, patronage of the arts, commercial advisory board, and indebted to the bourgeoisie. And that's all the estate setup done. Then you can seize land. Next, we're going to go ahead and hire some advisors. You can get this half cost yearly inflation reduction level 2 admin advisor. I do recommend him. Then you can also get this half cost improve relations level 2 advisor. I recommend getting him as well. And then get whichever level 1 mill advisor you want. Preferably a manpower, fort defense, morale or discipline guy. I do have this manpower guy, so I am going to hire him. Next, it's time to set your rivals. I recommend rivaling England as always. Do not rival Burgundy, even if they have rivaled you, because we want to flip them friendly. As we can see in my game right here, we're not rivaled, but they do hate me. And even though it changed a bit just now, we still want to get them friendly either way. So if they rival you, keep improving relations with them. Eventually, they will unrival you. Or if that doesn't happen in a war versus them, you can make them cancel that rivalry. Either way, go ahead and rival whichever other nations you want. In my game, only Aragon, Burgundy, and Castile are available. And actually, I'm not even going to rival Castile because we do actually want to be friendly with them. Ideally, in your game, you'd royal marry them and ally them right off the bat. Unfortunately, in my game, that's not a possibility. Either way, once you've set your rivals, it's time to work on our armies. So what you're going to do is you're going to take this top army right here and put this three maneuver guy in charge of it and send it down here. And then you're going to put this other general in charge of this other army right here. Something else that you're going to do right at the start is hire a free company and put it in the province that this army is going to arrive in. In my game, I just clicked on this, but it's not really too relevant. Next, with your diplomats, you can tell one of them to start improving relations with your own subjects, the apanages. Some of them may be disloyal during this point, but it's really not a big deal. And by the way, you should tell them to siege. 
Then, with another diplomat, you're gonna go ahead and ally the Pope. We are gonna be friendly with him, at least for now. And then, with this third diplomat, you're gonna start currying favors with Provence immediately. We do wanna curry favors with them for this mission right here, where they need to have 150 opinion of us and 90 trust. The reason we're currying favors with them is so we can trade favors for trust. Later, once this diplomat that allied the Pope frees himself up, you can also Royal Mary and ally Castile, if that is a possibility in your game. And after you do that, you should go ahead and Royal Mary Provence, Royal Mary all of your vassals, and then improve relations with Provence. Either way, now what we're waiting for is for these armies to gather down here. At this point, I do recommend that you start building boats as well that we're going to need later on. Not right now for the war versus England, but later. So I recommend you build it two transports right off the bat. And then I recommend that you start building up galleys. Use as much sailors as you can. Later, when you get the sailors back up, build more galleys. I recommend that you make this fleet right here, two heavies, 10 galleys and 10 transports. Then we'll focus on the light ships later on. For now, you can keep them docked. And once your army arrives down here, you should have completed your diplomatic setup situation, which, like I said, is to Royal Mary and ally Provence, ally the Pope, and ally and Royal Mary Castile if you had the option. In my case, I don't. In fact, they even supported the independence of Orleans right here, which is actually not that big of a deal. But either way, that's your diplomatic situation set up. Provence, Castile, hopefully, and the Pope, and then you should leave your guarantee on Scotland. Don't revoke it just yet. Yes, we will be over relations limit right here at the start, and we actually will be getting even more relations later down the line, but it's really not a problem. And now that your armies are here, you've royal married all your subjects, you've started currying favors with Provence and allied all of those guys, it's time to start our first war. And of course, it is gonna be versus England immediately. Now, you may think, why declare on England when the surrender of main war happens either way, but the thing is, it's not that reliable. England can simply choose to give main to us if they think we're too powerful, and then we'll have a really long truce with them, and we won't be able to fight them right off the bat, so that's why it's way better for us to declare on England instead of waiting for the event. So what you need to do is simply go ahead and declare on England for the reconquest of whatever you want. I'm simply going to select main right here and then go ahead and declare your war just like that. And there we go. That's your first war started. It'll be England, Portugal, and maybe one to three minor allies that England gets, usually in Ireland or over in the Low Countries. Either way, we don't care about those guys at all. So what you need to do right now is attach the free company over to the big army, the 14k stack, just like that. And then you actually want to swap around your generals. So put Jean de Dunois in charge of the smaller army and put Jean Barreau in charge of the large army. This is because this army is more powerful and we actually want to win four battles with Jean Barreau right here. Because if we do that, we will be able to get cannon regiments to spawn in 1444, which is an insanely, insanely powerful mission. So that's why you have that guy in charge of this big army right here. So now that the war has started, what you want to do is take both of these armies down here and go on to siege down Portugal and most importantly, siege down Ceuta as well. Even though Portugal and England will have naval superiority, they usually don't focus their boats down here and instead they go up here and over here to blockade you. So you should be able to cross over to Ceuta. Ideally, you would be allied with Castile at this point and you'd be able to easily get military access to Portugal. In my case though, as you saw, they rivaled me, so I won't be able to do that. Either way, let's hope Portugal or England gets mill access. But once this diplomat is back from starting your war versus England, what you need to do with him is improve relations with Burgundy as well, because if they rivaled us, we want them to stop rivaling us, or if they started off hostile, and in fact that just changed again, we want to make them non-hostile in order to royal marry them. So it's as simple as that. Go ahead and siege down Portugal, but don't piece them out, and once you do siege them down, turn back and siege down England. As you can see, as soon as the war started, I already arrived in Ceuta because all of these guys gave me mill access and Portugal just got their boats over here. I arrived before they got their boats there, so it's pretty simple. You should be able to get the Ceuta as well. Let your subjects do the work right here. Let England land. Let them siege you down. Let Portugal fight these guys. You're not concerned with what happens over here right now. You just want to siege down Portugal. Now I've sieged down Portugal, it's pretty easy, you'll be able to do it as well super super easily, and now I'm gonna go back and fight these guys and unsiege myself. Of course, be careful if there's lots of troops concentrated over here, and try and catch split stacks such as these right here. Make sure to not engage them while both of England's armies and Portugal's army are near each other. Either way, during this war at some point you will be able to take the mission Appease the Dynasties, which of course you should go ahead and do right away. If you've completed this mission, basically if you've won four battles with Jean Barreau right here, don't take it just yet. 
we don't want to spawn the cannons and catch ourselves off guard. It's best to take this mission after the war has ended or after you've beaten up everyone over here. Either way, go ahead and beat everyone up up here too. It should be pretty simple. We have really, really strong generals compared to England and Portugal. During this war, I am able to call in Provence. You might be able to call in Castile if you manage to ally them. You should do it. There's really no downside. You might get this war done a little faster. But you can totally do it alone with just your subjects. No need for any allies during this war. Once you get a little bit of favors with Provence, keep trading favors for trust all the time. We want to get them to 90. At this point, I can also take this mission right here because I've won battles with Jean Barreau. We're still not going to be doing it, of course. Additionally, if you want to save some money during this war, you could transfer occupation of your forts to your subjects so they pay for them. And by the way, you may notice that you are also able to take the mission Retake Gascony as soon as you siege down Bordeaux. And you can see the modifiers right here. Basically, if we complete it right now, the provinces will be cheaper to demand in a peace deal. But it's way better to take it after the war is done because then we lose devastation in these two provinces right here. And we also gain manpower recovery speed and minus 0.03 monthly war exhaustion. So even if you can take this mission as soon as you siege down Bordeaux, don't do it just yet. Once again, just like the cannon mission, we're going to be doing it after the war. Once you siege down all of Portugal and all of mainland Europe, England, there's no need to do anything else. You can fight some battles if you want to, if they go ahead and land and stuff like that. But really, it's just time to chill and wait for war score to tick up. You should be able to get around 80 to 90% war score just from occupying all of Portugal and all of England. Once again, during this war, I have made relations with Burgundy good enough to where I can go ahead and royal marry them. If you manage to ally them first, instead of royal marrying them first, you should of course always send the royal marriage offer yourself. Never accept a royal marriage from Burgundy, always send it yourself. This is very important for the Burgundian succession, because when the Burgundian guy dies, if they send that royal marriage, the royal marriage will be broken and we won't be eligible for the Burgundian succession. So always send it yourself. After this war, of course, I'm going to ally them as well. Whenever any of the additional English allies get low war enthusiasm, if they're over an island, of course, go ahead and white piece them because we're not getting war score from them. If England has allies over here, though, in Europe, make sure to siege them down, but keep them in a war, just like with Portugal. In my case, I can't siege these guys down, so I'm simply going to go ahead and send them a white peace offer. And once you get max war score, it is time to peace out. Like I said, it should be around 80 to 90 percent. And when you peace out, here is what you're going to take in your first war versus England and Portugal. Obviously, you're going to retake all of your cores over in the region of France, along with the province of Calais as well. Then we're also going to take the province of Ceuta from Portugal. And then we're also going to take Dublin from England over here in Ireland. So we have another area of expansion. By doing this, we consolidate the region of France, gain our cores back, makes us super powerful. But by taking Ceuta, we have another route of expansion over in the Maghreb. And by taking Dublin, we have a route of expansion over in Ireland and then later easy access through our potential ally Scotland into England or of course after conquering Ireland you could also conquer Scotland and then go on to England but more on that later so after you take all of this this and this you can take as much money as possible which for me is about 206 ducats and then go ahead and peace out and that's your first war versus England and Portugal done once this war is done now you can take the mission retake Gascony and gain those bonuses right there the manpower recovery speed and the monthly war exhaustion just like that and then you should also take the mission liberate Normandy as well which gives us some crown land along with mill points very nice of course you should also take the mission reline the bombards down here where we gain cannon regiments and that's the war done now it's time to chill and reconsolidate a little bit before moving on with our next wars. After this war is finished, you will get the event the Duke of Alençon. You should of course take this option right here where you lose stab and the nobles lose loyalty. But after you do that, you will gain another event for more stab. Don't worry. And this is the event, the end of the Hundred Years War. There's stab and admin points. Now once this war is over, you should of course go ahead and full state all of this immediately because it is your cores after all. Then you should go ahead and core up Calais and Ceuta, but don't core up Dublin. Instead, we're going to be releasing the nation of Meath as our subject. That's right, an additional subject. And we're going to be feeding all of Ireland to them. This is because as France, we really are going to struggle with governing capacity. So we're not going to be able to take Ireland for ourselves just yet. Instead, we're going to feed it to Meath and then annex them once we have the additional governing capacity. At this point, I'm also going to go ahead and ally Burgundy. Now, by securing that royal marriage and importantly, an alliance too with Burgundy, what we can do with them is actually call them in to some of our wars over here that might happen, of course, and then feed them stuff because either way, we're going to be getting that land ourselves later. 
But for now, we're just chilling after this war with England and currying favors with Provence to get them up to 90 trust. Soon, we'll continue with our wars either by fighting over in Ireland or over in the Maghreb. And speaking of Ireland and the Maghreb, you should go ahead and select provinces of vital interest throughout the entirety of Ireland so your subject Meath can spy on these nations right here and will have the CB to declare. Additionally, you should also start spying on Morocco yourself. For your tier 2 government reform as France, you do have a couple of options. Later on, you could of course go for strength and noble privileges for even more manpower that will mesh very well with our national ideas. But for now, this privilege will be too powerful for the nobles and they will be way too influential. So for now, definitely do not go with strength and noble privileges. Instead, what I recommend is compromise with the nobility, so increased levies no longer gives them influence, and we also gain a stab, discount, and yearly legitimacy, or you could also go with curtail noble privileges for the tax. Don't underestimate the tax in the early game. Everyone memes on it, but it is super, super important. So you can take whichever one of these two you want. Later, once they're not that influential, you could swap the strength and noble privileges. In my game, I'm gonna curtail noble privileges. Once this war is done, you could of course lower army mate and turn off your forts to save some money. Once you've taken tech 4 in every category and once the renaissance has spawned as well, it is time to develop it a little bit in our capital Paris. As we can see for this mission right here, the crown seat of Paris, we do need to develop our capital 8 times and additionally we need to have a no subject with more than 5% liberty desire and a bunch of legitimacy, then we gain a diplo annex discount and stuff like that. Paris starts off with about 23 development, I think in my game it's 24. So either way, develop it at least to 30, but ideally 8 times in order to complete this mission. So in my game, I need to dev it up to 32, which is precisely what I'm going to do. So activate encourage development, and then you could also go ahead and expand infrastructure to make it a little cheaper to dev as well, and then dev it up to your required number with whichever points you want, depending on how many you have in each category. In my game, all of them are pretty equal as we can see right here, so I am going to develop Paris equally to spend the equal amount of each point. And there we go, I bumped it up to 33 by accident. Of course, after this war, I do recommend deleting a bunch of forts as well, since we do have quite a lot of them. Definitely go ahead and delete the one over in this province and the one in Cayenne. I'm also going to delete the one in Chartres. So I'm just leaving this one, this one, this one, and this one, because those are the sides I want to protect. If we're allied to Castile, you could definitely get rid of these two as well, but keep in mind later you will be fighting these guys, so you could still keep them around. Once you're able to pick some papal thingies right here, definitely go with the Diplo Annex cost, since at this point we will start Diplo Annexing subject. And speaking of Diplo Annexing subjects, after 10 years have passed, you should definitely go ahead and give the nobility the integration policy, as long as they're not too influential, of course, and go ahead and annex whichever one of your starting apanages you want. In my game, I have above 190 with only Orlean and Armagnac, but Orlean is a little bit disloyal, so that's why I'm gonna annex Armagnac right here. Right now, you can hire a Diplo rep guy, but I recommend keeping these half cost level 2 guys around until they die. A couple of years after the England Portugal War, you should start making money. Focus on paying off your regular loans first, and then we're gonna focus on building buildings as well. The only point where we're losing money as France is pretty much the initial 10 years. After that, it's time for some big bucks. After a couple of years have passed after your first war and after you've started Started annexing one apanage, it is time to continue with your wars. And at this point, we have three possible routes of expansion. You could either continue to expand over in the region of France by fighting Brittany or maybe Provence if you chose to fight them instead of PU them, which is what we're doing right now with the favors. In my game right here though, Brittany is allied to Burgundy, so I'll deal with Brittany later. Then another route of expansion is over in Ireland, depending on if your subject Meath has made claims. In my game, they have claimed Leinster over here, so I can go ahead and fight there. Or you could go on to fight Morocco. Those are your three routes of expansion, France, Ireland, or the Maghreb. In my game though, fighting Morocco would be the easiest, because even though they're allied to Granada and Tunis, they wouldn't defend them, which is a perfect time to strike. Ideally right here, you'd be allied to Castile, Castile would already own Granada, and you can just walk like this over to Morocco. In my game though, since I haven't allied Castile, I'm gonna have to move my troops over to Ceuta first. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do now. Move my troops there, and then declare on Morocco. You can choose to do whichever one of these three different options you want in your game, depending on what's easiest for you. Keep in mind, we're still currying favors with Provence right here to get them to 90 trust. By this point, of course, your main fleet should be done. Like I said at the start, two heavies, 10 galleys, 10 transports. Soon, we'll build up the galley fleet, of course, even more. Now that I've taken my armies down to Ceuta, I will be declaring on Morocco. In this first war with Morocco, we want to focus on taking all of these provinces right here in the state of North Morocco along 
along with their super annoying fort in their capital of Fez. In my game, actually, they've downgraded it and it's not a level 3 fort anymore, which is super, super lucky for me. And in fact, their fort in Tangier doesn't even exist. I guess they lost a war or something. Either way, these are the five provinces we want to take in this initial war. Don't worry about the gold mine, we'll be going for it later. And there we go, I'll simply declare for Fez. Once you have enough war score to take these provinces, you're totally good to go ahead and peace out. No need to max out war score, no need to take money or war reps or anything like that from Morocco. This is the only thing we want to focus on. You may notice that it is a lot of aggressive expansion, but we really don't care about aggressive expansion when fighting these nations over here. So Morocco or their subjects, Clemson or Tunis or these small guys down here, we don't care about that. So once you have about 50-ish war score versus Morocco, you're good to go ahead and peace out for this right here. And then that's it. We want our troops to run out as fast as possible. After that, I do recommend adding Fez to a trade company immediately, and we will be trade companying everything in the Safi and Tunis trade nodes, except for this state right here, which has the province of Tafilot, which has the gold mine. Additionally, I also do not recommend trade companying North Morocco, even though you can. Keep it as a state, and later we will be converting its religion or accepting it, it really doesn't matter. But that's your initial war over in the Maghreb done. Then you can continue spying on whoever else is here. Morocco, their subjects, Clemson, Tunis, whoever expanded. Either way, just a couple of months ago, I also embraced the Renaissance. Once you do the same, you will be able to take this mission right here, where we gain a skill 3 stab discount advisor that's 75% cheaper, our ruler becomes a patron of the arts, and we also gain some other bonuses. Whenever you can, I do recommend seizing land once all of the estates are above 50 loyalty. Of course, even if they aren't, you might want to do that and fight some rebels because we do need to seize land every time we want to annex an additional apanage. It will tell you that if you try to do it. Either way, I'm just going to improve with Bourbon over here a little bit and then annex them. And there's my final trade favors for trust. And after this, I have a 90 trust with Provence. After you do that, and if they have 150 opinion of you, you will be able to take the mission, the Provencal question, where we're doing it in this way, but there's another way to do it, basically by conquering Provence. If you conquer Provence, you will gain minus 15% AE impact for 15 years, which is actually really, really strong. But if we do it like this, basically, if we gain 90 trust with them, have a royal marriage, we're allied and they have 150 opinion of us, a different event happens for them. And basically, they can choose to become our junior partner, which they do select in about 99% of the games. And just like that, we gain all of these very high development provinces that Provence owns, and especially the ones that Lorraine owns over here, pretty much for free. And there's a junior partner for us. After this, you should take the decision, the fate of Joan of Arc, where you gain some nice bonuses just like that. And there we go. I do think this is the better way to gain all of the provinces that Provence starts with. But now, here's something interesting that you also need to know after you PU these guys. As you all know, France sometimes gains a restoration of Union CB on Naples if Naples is independent. And of course, in my game, they are right here. Aragon always lets them go for free. But the only way you can get that event to PU Naples is by having Provence not exist. So maybe that's an argument for annexing Provence. You gain the restoration of Union CB on Naples. However, if you PU Provence and go into your missions right here and actually select Provence's missions down there, you will notice that if they fulfill certain requirements, they are able to take this mission right here, which gives them cores on all of the provinces that Naples starts off with. So that's another argument for PUing Provence. If you don't PU them, you can PU Naples. If you PU them, you will gain cores on Naples, which is super, super nice. And there we go. That is their mission right here, which they should take pretty soon. Additionally, you can also gain the province of Avignon for free right here. The if Provence and the Pope like each other, which honestly it should happen since us and the Pope like each other. So there's a definite chance for this, gaining cores on Naples, and there's a pretty high possibility that they can get Avignon as well. And there we go, in my game Provence have already taken that mission, and as we can see those are their claims or should I say cores over on Naples. At this point there's another additional route of expansion, fighting Naples. In my game though they just allied Austria, as you saw a couple of seconds ago, they weren't allied to Austria, but either way, no big deal. We can still take them down very easily. After you PU'd Provence, and if they're large enough, which they should be, now you have four possible routes of expansion. Ireland, France, the Maghreb, and now Southern Italy. Maybe by this point, you also got the event where you got a restoration of Union CB on Milan, which is another additional route of expansion over in Northern Italy. Keep in mind though, even if you got that event for the restoration of Union CB on Milan, don't declare on them until they've left the HRE. 
In my game right here, since I'm still not able to ally Castile, which is sort of something you do want to do, like I said at the start, instead I'll be looking for other allies, not that we need them, but it's nice to have at least one. I'm just gonna ally Poland right here, who seem to be pretty strong themselves. No real reason behind this alliance. Maybe they can help us fight Austria later on? We'll see. Once you hit Admin Tech 5, it will be time for your first idea group, and in a massive blobbing campaign such as the one you'll have as France, even if you're colonizing later on, I still recommend opening up with diplomatic ideas. Now, even though we have so many subjects, you might think influence is better, and yes, influence is really good too, but influence would mostly help us out only during the early portion of the game where we have so many subjects at one time. Sure, later we'll have subjects as well, but only one or two or three at a time instead of like 10 or whatever we have right now. Diplo helps us with the addition diplomatic relations, diplo advisor cost is great, the diplo rep is great for annexing subjects faster, the diplomats are great for improving relations with outraged countries to avoid coalitions, this will help us take more provinces, this will help us gain some views, so definitely open up with diplomatic ideas. We're already focusing on dip since the start, that's how you start the game as France, so no need to change anything there. Now I'm also going to start annexing Bourbon since I've approved up to 190 with them and because we seized land. You need to seize land before you annex any appanage. After you complete your second war, you can build up the main army a little bit to 22 or 3. Once you've gotten your second war wrapped up and you've viewed Provence, it is time to continue expanding while waiting for a truce with England to expire, and I already mentioned the four possible routes of expansion, Ireland, France, the Maghreb, or Italy. Because we already fought in the Maghreb, I'm gonna chill in that area for now. Still can't fight Brittany, still I like the Burgundy. The situation in Ireland seems pretty stable, so that's why the most important thing for me right here is to get Provence's cores back over from Naples. If you conquered Provence, you would have gotten the Restoration of Union CB by now, and then you should go ahead and pay you Naples. If you feud Provence, go ahead and reconquer their course. Even though they're allied to Austria, for me, this isn't going to be a problem. So I'm just going to declare a reconquest for their core of Naples and call in the Pope. Why not? If you haven't already selected your naval doctrine, I do recommend galley combat, at least in the early portion of the game right here. Later, you can definitely go with the unique one, Letter of Mark, which gives us chance to capture enemy ships, fleet movement speed, and ship disengagement chance. But for now, the early game, free oarsmen. And by the way, speaking of the PUing Milan event, the reason I haven't gotten it is because their original ruler is still alive, I think. If we ever end up fighting Austria, you can go ahead and humiliate them, take all their money, war reparations, the usual, make them end an alliance or two, get some prestige, the usual. And once you do go ahead and defeat Naples, simply give Provence all of their cores back. It won't be a lot of aggressive expansion at all. And there we go. There's all of these provinces pretty much for free going to our subject, which is, of course, pretty much us. And that's your war with Naples done if you did manage to fight them in this way. If you manage to fight the PU war, then simply go ahead and PU them. I do think this way is slightly better because we do end up with a less aggressive expansion rather than fighting the PU war. And there we go. That's your war with Naples done. Once you give all those provinces to Provence, you will be able to take the mission Throne of Naples down here where this event happens. Honestly, for this event, you can choose whichever option you want. All of them are pretty good. Read through them. I think this one right here is the weakest one, honestly, even though they're perma claims. So I recommend going with some of these right here. I'm full on power projection right now, so I'm just going to get the dev discount and tax. Like I said, underrated for the start of the game. Right now, Burgundy just called me into a war versus some members of the Empire. Of course, if Burgundy does call you into a war, definitely go ahead and accept and help them out since you'll be getting those provinces later. Either way, something else I wanted to say is apparently by us, annexing Naples, the Pope likes Provence now, which means they gave Avignon over to the Pope. Perfect. There's another additional province for free. For your first stage ability, you should of course select Justified Wars. There we go, Burgundy pieced out Austria and even took these two provinces from them, which is excellent. We don't care if Burgundy grows, in fact, we want them to grow. We'll be getting these provinces ourselves. They even took this province from Burg over here, their aggressive expansion must be insane. Either way, that's what happens when you get Charles the Bold here. At this point, around the 1460s, you can definitely go ahead and lower autonomy everywhere that you can because it will have been increasing since the start. We will be fighting some rebels into this, sure, but we do need all of the bonuses that come with the lowered autonomy, of course. And whenever you can, definitely make sure to seize land as well. I'm only going to do that after I dev up this province over here a little bit for this estate agenda just like that so now i'm gonna summon the diet once again all of the estates are above 50 loyalty there we go i'm gonna select this one right here for example and now i'm gonna seize land again which means i can annex the next appanage in my game that's foie in my game right now castile has finally decided to unrival me which is excellent which means i can real marry them and ally them we sort of want to have an alliance with them in the early portion of the game even though we want to conquer all of this later on that's because we'll be getting a lot of help from them with sieging down Portugal and fighting in the Maghreb. Why not make things easier for us? And most importantly, it means easy access to our holdings in the Maghreb. 
If you end up having a yearly inflation reduction and a trade efficiency guy, you will be able to get this event right here where you can fire both of them for a bunch of points. Of course, fire them first, then get the points, and then hire them back because they really are very good advisors. After a certain point, once autonomy has been lowered everywhere, you will be able to take commission, connect the provinces where you gain some nice bonuses. There we go. Either way, once you wrap up a war in a different region, it's time to do your next war in a different region. I fought in the Maghreb and in Italy, still can't do France, so that's why it's time to jump over to Ireland. By this point, depending on your expansion opportunities, you may have expanded more over here than me, more over here than me, less over here than me, less over here than me. It really doesn't matter. Everyone should take advantage of their opportunities in their own game. Either way, I'm going to declare on this nation right here, and you can try and co-belligerenting anyone that you might want to over in Ireland, and of course, we're feeding everything to Meath. And right during this war, there's the Burgundian succession, and Burgundy chose me. Of course, in your game, they should most likely choose you as well, and just like that, we have Burgundy as our junior partner. Immediately when that happens, immediately you will be able to take the mission, the Burgundian succession, where the event, the Duchess of Burgundy dies, happens, and we inherit all of Burgundy instantly. You do want to do that immediately because as soon as that happens, the Burgundian Inheritance Imperial Incident will trigger where Austria can demand the lowlands from us, go to war, try and PU Burgundy themselves, blah blah blah, all the things that we actually want to avoid and not be bothered with. So, as soon as this happens, once you get Burgundy and all of their subjects, it's time to immediately click this mission and get this event, and just like that, all of this land is ours. It seems at some point though, Holland broke free from Burgundy, which is not a big deal. Normally, you would get these three provinces as well. That Bur Instead, I got these three right here, the Burgundy conquered, so it's pretty much the same. This is where governing capacity is going to become a real problem, though, until we get admin ideas or admin tech 8 as well. So at this point, you can give some of your estates the governing capacity privilege. Keep in mind, though, that this lowers your crownland. So even though you can full state all of these things immediately for free, without wasting any additional admin points, be careful with the governing capacity. In fact, I'm also going to give the clergy their land rights privilege as well. Of course, don't delete the armies you inherit from Burgundy just yet. But definitely make sure to rearrange the boats that you get from Burgundy for sure. We are going to be way over naval force limit. You could be a lot faster than I am by doing all of these same things. As we can see, aggressive expansion in my campaign is pretty much zero. And this is, of course, because this guide is tailored towards newer players. But if you're a more experienced player and you just want to know maybe what is the not optimal, but perhaps a pretty good way to play friends, then you could definitely do everything I'm doing way faster. Now that this war in Ireland for me is done, I'm going to feed all of these provinces over here to me. Simple as that. You can immediately continue fighting other wars in Ireland, or you could shift your expansion opportunities elsewhere. Before your truce with England is up, as we can see for me, it's going to run out in a couple of months. You want to establish other relations with Scotland as well. Of course, during this time, we have been guaranteeing them, which means they should still look like this. England shouldn't have expanded into them. And at this point, you are going to go ahead and ally Scotland. Don't royal marry them, though. The only reason we're allying them is so we can call them in this war versus England, and the only reason for that is so we can place our army over here in their provinces and immediately march into England. Of course, we're not going to give them anything. We only want to ally them for this second war versus England, and after we end our second war versus England, we're going to dissolve our alliance with them and revoke our guarantee because we're going to expand into them as well. So ally Scotland before your second war with England. Once your truce with England is up, go ahead and ask for military access from Scotland and place your troops over here. And once your troops are over here, definitely go ahead and declare your next war versus England, either from a claim you have or from your subjects. In my case, I'm only going to use Meath's claim for Leinster right here. You may be able to call in Castile during this point to help you out versus Portugal. If not, you're simply going to use your subjects or a different army to go ahead and siege down Portugal. In this war, you can actually take whatever you want from Portugal, money, war reps, even provinces, which I don't really recommend, but you could do it. Either way, there's your second war versus England started. Make sure to call in Scotland though, otherwise this army is going to get black flagged. And there we go, there's your second war versus England started. At this point, they may still have a very large navy, so try to avoid naval battles. Here I'm going to peace out Ulster by feeding it to Meath. I'm still giving everything over in Ireland to Meath. Real reason, like I said at the start, governing capacity. I'm also going to peace out this nation and feed it to Meath. From Portugal here, I'm going to take war reps and all of their money, and I'm also going to make them end some rivalries. I'm not making them end their alliance with England, because otherwise England might ally someone stronger. So, keep these guys as alliance between each other. Portugal is a very easy war score and they're super easy to peace out. Once you've beaten up England completely, it's time to peace them out. And here's what I recommend taking in your war versus them. 
First, give all of the provinces that they may own in Ireland over to your subject Meath. In my case, I can't give them this one because it's occupied by Scotland. Then you should go ahead and take this province right here, these two provinces right here, and this province right here as well. Then I also recommend getting war reps and taking additional provinces not in the Wales area and not in these five provinces over here. So what I'm going to do is take Man, for example, these three provinces right here, and that is about enough aggressive expansion for now. You could, of course, take way more if you want to in your game, and I'm also going to take some money from them. And that's my second war with England done. And that is similar to what you should have taken as well. Once your second war with England is done, go ahead and release the nation of Wales and go ahead and release the nation of Northumberland as well. This is once again for governing capacity reasons. As you guys can see, it's pretty close to being overfilled. But of course, Wales also has scores on these provinces, which really aren't that valuable if you look at it that way. But Northumberland also has scores on these provinces, which are pretty valuable. And that's your second war with England done. Like I said, you could have taken a lot more, depending on what you want to do in your game, but this is simply what I chose to take in mind. Once that war with England is done, you can definitely break your alliance with Scotland and revoke your guarantee, because soon we're going to be fighting them as well. Of course, when you get the money, definitely start building up buildings by starting off with the marketplaces in all of the center of trade provinces, pretty much every province that gives you more than two trade power over here. Or you could simply look at the map as well. For example, I'm going to build one over in this province, right here in Bruges. There is already one. We're definitely going to put one down in Calais. We're going to put one down in Co, in Cotentin, every center of trade or estuary province, even if you don't own it, even if your subjects own it. Right now, I just got 190 relations with Auvergne by sending them a gift. And of course, it's time to annex them. But what do we need to do? We need to seize land because I haven't seized land since I annexed them. So these two guys are above 50 loyalty. The bourgeoisie aren't. So I'm simply going to summon the diet and choose the best agenda for me. And then we're above 50, which means as soon as I beat up these rebels right here, I am going to be able to seize land and annex Auvergne. So keep annexing your starting apanages. They're the first nations we want to annex. Provence, Meath, we can leave them for later. Then, of course, you're going to want to get Nevers done as well when you've inherited Burgundy because they'll go to you. At this point, something else has happened. I actually got three stability from an event right here. And when you complete these requirements, basically have high legitimacy, stability, and Provence is pretty developed, you will be able to take this mission a House United, which will give you Facile Force Limit and Liberty Desiring Subjects for 20 years. But if Provence has 190 opinion of you and 100 trust, you'll gain those other modifiers, such as the additional Diplomat and plus one Diplo Rep, which I do think is pretty helpful for annexing your subject. So in my game, yes, they do like me. However, I don't have 100 trust with them. So so what I'm simply going to do right here is trade favors for trust. There we go. 10 trust for 20 favors. Now they have 100 trust, which means now if I take this mission, I'll get the diplomats and diplo rep. And there we go. I do recommend that you complete this mission in this way as well. These modifiers are better than these ones right here. Now I just seize land, so I'm going to annex Auvergne. The final appanage, except for Orlean, which is still a bit disloyal because they're still being supported by Castile, even though I've allied them. No big deal though. Right now, I've also given the nobility, nobility to land rights as well. All three of my estates have the land rights privileges active, and we're still gonna struggle with Gulf Cap, trust me. We do want to get to Admin Tech 8 as fast as possible for the additional Gulf Cap, and to unlock Admin Ideas, and to start building up the courthouses. But until then, and even after then, you really are gonna struggle. Of course, if anything like this happens in your game too, you can just placate these guys. Now that a little bit of time has passed, I'll be continuing with my wars by declaring a Morocco right here again, since Tunis won't help them. I did want to fight Brittany, but they're allied to England, so I'm waiting for my cores from England to finish before I fight them, because as you all know, coring stops when you fight a nation that has cores over there. Either way, we're simply continuing the same tactic as earlier. Because we've already dealt with Southern Italy, that's not an area of expansion anymore, at least for now. So I'll be continuing with the other areas of expansion, the Maghreb, France, and Great Britain. Either way, there's my declaration on Morocco. In your second war versus Morocco, or whoever is located here, now is when you'll take the gold mine. So there we go. I'm simply going to declare for that province right there. After you build up all of the relevant marketplaces, focus on churches and production buildings, especially in the high value trade good province. For your tier 3 government reform, since we're playing so heavily with subjects still, I recommend representatives of the crown. Our subjects will gain some very nice bonuses, and we'll also gain diplo relations, vassal force from a contribution too. Once you defeat Morocco in your second war, of course you should focus on taking the gold mine immediately, pretty much this entire state right here, the state of Tafelot, and then after you take this entire state, Focus on taking as much coastline as you can or want to in order to sort of prevent Portugal, Castile, and Aragon from expanding into them. This is what I'm going to do. I'm in fact going to take their entire coastline. 
yes, this is going to create a little bit of a problem for us with governing capacity, but either way, it's no big deal. And boom, just like that, your second war with Morocco, or whoever you fought in order to get the gold mine, is done. Now, you want to trade company everything except for this state or province right here. You can do only the province, you can do the entire state, it's totally up to you. But I am going to trade company everything else that we've taken over there. We don't really want to deal with the religious disunity penalties for the Safi and Tunis trade note. So, there we go. There's a trade company on everything right there, all of the coastal provinces, and now I'm going to core everything else. If you gain enough control of Safi, you will gain a third merchant. You can use this guy to collect in the English Channel. Now, I only have my final appanage left to annex, so I'm going to go ahead and summon the diet again to get all of these guys above 50 once again, and then I'm going to seize land once again, and now we can go ahead and annex them as well. There we go. That's our final appanage being annexed right now. Either way, once you complete the requirement for this mission right here, which is pretty much building up a bunch of churches, you will be able to take this mission as well and gain some nice bonuses. Now that I'm done with that war, I'll finally be getting back to the region of France because Brittany now is of course no longer allied to Burgundy because Burgundy doesn't exist. I'm simply going to declare on Brittany to full annex them. You'll be full annexing them as well. And since they're allied with England, I'm only going to white piece England to reduce my truce with them. There we go. Fight Brittany whenever you can. Maybe it was your first war after your initial war, depending on the alliance situation. Either way, go ahead and fight them. And actually, very interestingly, here's the Milanese succession event. Usually you get this way earlier, sort of around the 1450s, but this is pretty much the event. You can choose this first option right here, where you gain a restoration of Union CB on Milan for 25 years, or you can select that we have no interest in Milan. Of course, you're going to go ahead and select this first option right here for the restoration of Union CB on Milan. And keep in mind, if it's before the 1460s, like I said earlier, wait until after 1460, so they've left the HRE, so you don't have to fight the Emperor. That's perfect. So, whenever you're ready, when you get this event, definitely go ahead and declare on Milan and PU them. It is something we want to do. Make sure that they've left the HRE though. Once you had admin deck 7, it will be time for your second idea group, and for your second idea group, I recommend administrative ideas. This is a no-brainer for a massive conquest campaign such as France. We definitely need the advisor discount, just like we got the advisor discount over here. The additional advisors are great. The minus 25% core creation cost is super, super important. The pr promote culture cost is excellent as well. The stab discount, the monthly autonomy change, and the admin tech discount, but most importantly, the governing capacity modifier as well. So Diplo Admin, a classic opening for any campaign, not just as France, where you're planning on expanding quite a lot. And once you go ahead and defeat Brittany, definitely go ahead and full annex them. And that's your war with them done. And there we go, right now in exactly 1480, Orlean, the final appanage for me, has been annexed. After you annex your initial appanages, you should work on annexing Navarres. Now, before you begin your conquest in Northern Italy or do your war versus Milan where you PU them, you need to choose a certain option right here. This mission right here, the Papal Lands of Avignon, as you can see, we need to own Avignon or have a subject own it, and then we either need to have really good relations with the Pope or scornfully insult them or regularly insult them. Depending on what we do, basically, if we want to remain friendly with the Pope or not, you gain different bonuses from this mission, and these three missions differ. So, you end up getting Avignon because Provence had good relations with the Pope and they own Avignon now. That's excellent. Then, if we want to continue to have good relations with the Pope, we need them to have 190 opinion of us, which in my game they do, and it says right here that you need to spend 50 Papal Influence, and of course that is this option right here. There we go, you need to do that until you hit 50, pretty much to have good relations with the Pope. If you do that in that way, then you'll gain 25 random monarch points, 10 Papal Influence, and every time a new Papal Bull is enacted, we gain plus 20% manpower in True Faith provinces for 25 years, which is honestly really, really strong. Additionally, we also gain a permanent claim on the area of Palestine, which is right here. Now, what this mission doesn't tell you is that these branches right here will basically become the Crusader missions, and they do give us some really, really strong options, by the way. The possibility to form the Kingdom of Jerusalem over here as a subject. Really nice bonuses if we become a Tier 5 Defender of the Faith. As we can see, if you hover over them, they will tell you this is the Jerusalem mission, this is the mission where we're supposed to become Defender of the Faith, and this final mission right here is really strong too, but it also gives you the bonuses if you choose to defy the Pope, which is pretty much gonna be this other option right here, where you gain the Italian Wars expanded for 20 years for plus 15% siege ability and perma claims on lots of Northern Italy areas. Then, if you choose to go with that route, over here, this mission will lead us to further solidify our rule into Naples, which is honestly pretty strong. If we choose to defy the Pope, this mission right here further solidifies the control of Milan, whereas if we remain friendly with the Pope, we may end up giving Lombardy to him, which we don't want to do that, and of course this mission right here 
will give us very nice bonuses to Milan. So, choose whichever option you want to do right here. Either you'll be friendly with the Pope and focus on conquering stuff over here, restoring Jerusalem, but you do have to give up control of Northern Italy sort of to the Pope, or you don't be friendly with the Pope, you don't get the bonuses over here and the religious bonuses from these missions, and instead you focus on Italy. Choose whichever path you want to. Both paths are really strong in my opinion, but for the purposes of this guide, we are going to be going for the Italy path as opposed to this path, and you can definitely check out this path in my previous 1.35 France guide. So what I'm going to do in order to accomplish this mission is actually send a scornful insult over to the Pope. There we go. Now we can do this mission. And since we did it in the scornfully insulting the Pope way, we're going to go ahead and get the bonuses for Italy. And there we go. Those are the perma claims that we've gotten. Perfect. Now that I've done that, I'm finally going to go ahead and declare the Restoration of Union War on Milan. You can do this whenever you've gotten the Restoration of Union CB. Of course, during this point, I'm not only conquering. I'm constantly taking out new loans and new burger loans in order to improve my nation economically and build up a bunch of buildings. Once you've defeated Milan, you're of course going to select the option Union with Milan and take all of their money. It's really not going to be that much aggressive expansion. And there you go. You have Milan as a junior partner as well. If you've already done this mission in the way that by scornfully insulting the Pope, you will be able to take the mission Ambrosian Succession where this event happens. And you can choose between one of these two options right here, which both are really, really strong in my opinion. For this first option right here, you get a Diplomat, a Covert Actions Relations Impact. Basically, if they discover your spy network, they won't be mad. We can also gain Da Vinci, who's 75% cheaper and a production efficiency guy in Paris, gain some nice bonuses like a dev discount, innovativeness gain, local great project upgrade cost, and we infiltrate the courts of every Italian nation that isn't allied. I think that means 100 spy network on all of them. Or you can choose the second option right here for 100 mil points, minus 20% more cost, and 5% CCR. Both of these options are really good. Take whichever one you want. I'm going to go with this first one right here. And of course, I'm going to hire Da Vinci. Of course, once you do take this from Morocco or whoever you took it from, make sure to go ahead and full state it, activate encourage development, and develop it to 10 production. Lower autonomy as well. At any point, make sure to develop one of these four provinces three times with whichever points you want. After that, you'll be able to take the mission Loire Valley Chateau, where this event happens. You can either choose this first option right here for Nobles Loyalty and a little bit of dev, or the second option right here for Money and Admin. I'm going to choose this option right here. After doing that mission, you want to complete this one by basically letting Devastation take down in Brittany and improving the province of Armor four times. That's this province right here. Once you fulfill the requirements for this mission, you should of course take it. The main requirement here is probably going to be the Liberty Desire from Subjects, but definitely go ahead and take it for the Diplo Annex discount and all estates influence. After you take that mission, you will most likely be able to take another government reform and as France, depending on what you want to do with your religion, of course, you could choose a couple of options. If you want to remain Catholic, I do recommend taking lands for the church. If you're planning on flipping to Protestant or Reformed or something like that later on, then you can definitely maintain the balance of power. In my game right here, I am planning to stay Catholic, so I am going to go with lands for the church. Right now, I'm going to seize land again, and I'm going to annex the latest appanage, which we got in Nevers. Pretty much appanages are vassals in the region of France. Once your truce with England is up, your second one that is, of course you're going to keep hitting them again and again and again. This is now going to be our third war versus them, and even though we're expanding in so many different regions during this point, England is still the main nation we're focusing on taking down the most because we want to gain major control over the English Channel trade node. So, whenever your truce with them is up, simply declare your third war versus them, and in this war you're going to focus on reconquering Northumberland or Wales, of course, and then taking something else for yourself. In my game right here, I'm going to declare a reconquest for Northumberland itself, and I'm going to call in Castile to help me peace out Portugal faster. Right now, I just annexed Nevers. And once you wrap up your next war with England, I recommend giving Northumberland all of their cores back. Once again, taking anything that may be over in Ireland and giving it to your subject Meath. Then you can also give Wales's courses back, even though it's not a reconquest for them. And then you could take additional provinces over in England for yourself. This is what I'm going to do in my game right here. And that's my third war with England done. Right now, since I've built some heavy ships, I can take the mission the Port of Calais. You should, of course, do it immediately. It allows you to designate Calais as a staple port, and it gives us permaclaims on coastal provinces in the lowlands and on the London area. Another mission you should look to complete during this point is this one right here, where you need to have 12 galleys 
and build some docks and shipyards over in these two provinces that are highlighted on the map. This will give us some bonuses over in those provinces, along with permaclaims on the Sicily areas. If you took that decision that gives you a half off discount for upgrading projects over in Paris, definitely do go ahead and upgrade them. Of course, after you wrapped up a war versus England, you're free to expand elsewhere in other regions. Of course, if governing capacity permits it, like I said, that is going to be a major problem until you get to Admin Tech 8, get that additional guff cap from there, start building up the courthouses, and until you finish off Admin Ideas for additional governing capacity. What I'm going to do to continue my conquest right now is actually declare on Venice in order to reconquer Milan's course from them. That's another way to work around the governing capacity issue. Just feed your subjects. I'm going to call in Poland here to help out. Once you complete some of these requirements right here, either calf combat, the number of cavalry, or professionalism, you will be able to take this mission right here where we gain access to the unique government reform which will empower our cavalry and morale damage. We also gain some additional professionalism. More on this government reform later since it's a tier 5 government reform. Now that I defeated Venice, I'm going to give the cores back to Milan along with one additional province. I'm not taking too much over here because this isn't a region where we're focusing on right now. Instead, we want to focus on the initial claims that we've gotten over here from our missions. Really, these are the first provinces we want to take over in Italy because that's how our mission tree moves along. So that's why I'm only giving one province to Milan right here. Even though I can give more, I don't want additional aggressive expansion, which will of course make me take less when I fight Savoy. I'm also going to take warps and all of their money. Once you finally get to Admin Tech 8 and you gain that additional governing capacity, the first thing you want to do is take out as much loans as you can. Burger loans, regular loans, it really doesn't matter. As we can see, I took out about 5,300 ducats worth of debt right here. And go ahead and start building those courthouses immediately in every single province since they don't take up a slot. The governing capacity really is what's hindering our expansion opportunities right now. Now to continue with my wars, I'll be declaring on Morocco. We're still expanding in the same initial regions that we've been expanding in since the start. The region of France, if you haven't wrapped up everyone over there, in my case I pretty much have, Britain and Ireland, the Maghreb, and Italy. But it's time for me to finish off Morocco. And there you go, as we can see, those courthouses helped out quite a lot. Now I can finally go ahead and state these things that I inherited from Burgundy so long ago. Full state them is what I mean. There we go. Perfect. This will help out a lot. Now that I've defeated Morocco, I'm going to go ahead and full annex them and take all of their money. Of course, we're adding all available provinces over here to a trade company. This is the only thing that's stated. Now that I'm done over in the Maghreb for now, I'll once again shift my expansion opportunities over to Britain and Ireland by declaring on Scotland right here and co-belligerenting Tyrone. Sure, Denmark is in this war too, but Denmark is really a pushover and no need to be concerned with them. A little bit of bad timing for me though, because they've just declared a succession war on Muscovy over who gets hungry. Oh well, of course I'm gonna accept. Like I said boys, don't underestimate tax in the early portion of the game. Over in this war, I am gonna give the final province in Ireland to my subject, Meath. Once again, we're still keeping these guys around because governing capacity is a problem. Otherwise, we'd own all of this by now and there would be no need to feed anything in Ireland to our subject. Once you've won your war versus Scotland, you can take as much as you can from them or as much as you want. It's totally up to you. In my game, let's see right here, I actually can't full annex them either way, but I'm not really interested in this province right here, which is not even in the region of Great Britain. So I'm almost gonna full annex them, leaving them alive in only one province, the province of Shetland. Once you complete this mission right here by developing this province, this event right here happens and we gain a very nice advisor along with some institution and papal bonuses. Then you'll be able to take the mission the Crown of France, which gives us 10 permanent power projection, which is actually really strong along with a lot of prestige. And if you're maxed out, the rest will turn into monarch points. These are the requirements. These are pretty much natural missions that come along as you play along. But then once we do these missions here, these three, we get to a very interesting one, Face the Empire where basically we can choose whether to go down the dismantling of the HRE path or becoming the HRE Emperor path. Once the Age of Reformation comes around, if you got the Burgundian succession, which you should have, the Dutch Revolt disaster will start taking where all you need to do to avoid it is to simply move your capital over to the Lowlands. I can do that as soon as I beat up these rebels. There we go, I beat them up, so I'm simply going to move it over to Bruges. And there we go, disaster avoided, and either way like this, the English Channel becomes our main trade node, which is something we do want to do especially if you're focusing on colonization later on. If you're not colonizing, Genoa might be a better home node, but either way, with later expansion, we're going to be collecting from both. Now that that's dealt with, I'll once again be declaring over on England. Like I said earlier, we're continuing to pummel them as hard as we can whenever we can. And there we go. And once again, once you defeat England, take as much as you want or can from them. Of course, you're not going to be able to full annex them in this war, but you could do something like this, for example. Although be careful with aggressive expansion, so maybe do a little bit less. 
no need to take money or warps from them. Either way, once you fulfill the requirements for this mission, of course by conquering Scotland, it can be done through allying them as well, you will take it and you gain these bonuses down here. Very nice. And at this point we're still continuing to expand to the same regions we've already expanded in. Right now I'm going to be declaring on Savoy. You should look to do that after you wrap up everyone else over in the region of France. And this is so we take these two final provinces in the region of France from them and to start expanding over in Italy to advance down our mission tree. So there's the declaration on Savoy. I'm simply going to declare for something like Torino for example. And once you end up defeating Savoy in your war, what I recommend taking is the two provinces that they own in the region of France, Brescia and Chambéry over here, and then taking one to three provinces over in the region of Italy, depending on how much aggressive expansion permits you. For example, I'm going to take Nizza right here, we're still good with aggressive expansion. Let's do Torino as well, since that was our war goal. It is their capital, pretty high dev, and we're already at 50, so if I want to take another one, there's a coalition that can form, and that's about enough for now. Expansion during this point in Italy is going to be pretty slow, of course, due to all the high development provinces over in the north but by PUing Milan potentially of course but there is a pretty high chance of it happening you do save yourself a lot of conquest with their super high dev provinces and a reconquest on Venice too. Once you fulfill the requirements for the mission Face the Emperor, like I mentioned earlier, an event will happen that will allow us to choose whether to go for the Emperorship and become the Holy Roman Emperor. And basically, if you want to, go down the Holy Roman Empire reform path and get all of these guys right here as your subjects that, of course, don't take up a Diplo slot or just take advantage of the benefits of being Emperor. Or, of course, you could choose to dismantle it. And there we go, the preview missions get revealed right here, and these are basically the missions right here, where the Holy Roman Imperial Path shows up, where we need to get electors to vote for us, become the Emperor, develop your nation, and undo the part where the Italian nations leave the HRE, or you have the other path right here, which basically requires you to conquer stuff over in the HRE, dismantle the HRE, and not focus on becoming the HRE Emperor. You can do whichever one of these you want, honestly, both options are pretty fun, but I do feel like going down being the HRE Emperor Path is the more powerful version of it. Of course, you can do whatever you want to, and it's totally up to you. I'm just gonna leave this like this for now, not click anything to represent the choice that you might still have not made. But if you're going down the Holy Roman Emperor Path, this is definitely around the time after you take this mission where you want to focus on allying electors to get them to vote for you. You should be able to get elected pretty quickly because we have Diplo ideas, pretty high Diplo reps, so it really shouldn't be a problem allying for electors. We haven't even been expanding in the HRE, so these guys won't really be mad at us for doing stuff over in Great Britain and Italy. And by another time colonialism and the Protestant Reformation spawn, your realm should look a little something like this. Basically, we started off as France, obviously by going to war with England, and in that initial war versus England, we took back all of the cores that we had in the region of France, along with the province of Calais, which wasn't our core. We also took the province of Dublin to enable expansion over in Ireland, and we took the province of Ceuta from Portugal to enable expansion over in the Maghreb. And after that, we had three regions of expansion, basically the region of France right here, Britain and the Maghreb and you should have shifted your conquest opportunities between those three regions fighting Morocco or someone over here fighting in Ireland fighting in France if you could and pretty much the only nation you really want to fight in France is the nation of Brittany and of course if you chose to fight Provence as well or maybe you chose to PU them it really depends on that but those are the three initial regions that we were focusing on expanding in in the early portion of the game of course you should have focused on getting the Burgundian succession as well if Burgundy started rival towards you or if they didn't like you you should have worked to improve relations with them make them unrival you and stuff like that so you could royal marry them yourself not accept a royal marriage from them so you're eligible for the burgundian succession when your truces with england were up you kept pummeling them you you fed all of ireland to meath you released northumberland and wales reconquered their cores and by this point some of you will have already wrapped up all of great britain Expansion number grab, it's totally up to you how far you want to go. For a regular France playthrough, you should definitely go at least for the Safi and Tunis trade nodes. If you're going for something more, you could of course push into Alexandria. But after you took care of Provence, if you annexed them, you should have gotten an event to PU Naples. And then if you ate up Provence, you should have Naples as your junior partner. But if you PU'd Provence, you should have given them back all of their cores over in Southern Italy. And of course, if you were lucky, if you got the event to PU Milan, which realistically you should have, you should have PU'd Milan as well and started your expansion in northern Italy as well. So these are very important provinces right here. Milan and Provence or Milan and Naples that you should have definitely gotten a super high development and we're getting them basically for free by PUing or reconquering their cores. And of course by this point the Burgundian succession should definitely have happened and you should have instantly inherited Burgundy with the click of this button right here. And by this point in the game this is sort of what you should own. Like I said earlier look aggressive expansion isn't bad at all. This could definitely be done way faster than I'm doing it right now. 
with slightly more aggressive gameplay you could own the entirety of britain you could probably own the entirety of the maghreb right now you could have definitely pushed a lot more into italy but of course this is a guide meant for newer players and i do feel like this right here is pretty realistic for even inexperienced players to achieve by this point in the game by the time colonialism and the protestant reformation spawn and with this gameplay, by this point, you should own the entire region of France and maybe a little bit more over in Germany and in the Low Countries if Burgundy had expanded over there, whether directly or indirectly through subjects. You should own most, if not all, of the region of Britain, of course, partially through subjects, partially yourself, because like I mentioned many times, governing capacity is going to be a significant problem this campaign. You should own all of Southern Italy through Provence or Naples, and you should own a big portion of Northern Italy through Milan or through your own conquest. And you should definitely own about half of them a grab by now as well of course during this point we haven't only been focusing on expanding ourselves or growing our vassals or our junior partners or anything like that because you should have definitely been focusing heavily on improving the economic situation as france the only period where you're really going to lose money as france is the first 10 or 15 years because you're sort of at the limits right you have big armies and stuff like that you're going to war pretty often where your economy can't really sustain that but after the first 10 or 15 years your economy should definitely be booming right now for me i'm making about 50 ducats a month which may not seem like a lot but i do have three full army stacks right here 24 for 7 both of them according to combat with that is the ideal composition i think right now for this point in the game there are the stacks right there all of them 24 for 7 massive income from tax during this point in the game like i said many times do not underestimate it lots of people meme on developing with admin points or getting tax modifiers and stuff like that but trust me in the early game it's super super important of course pretty soon right here in just a couple of years or decades tax will become irrelevant because production and trade are going to take over most of your economy but by this point definitely don't ignore that now i'm just going to show off some buildings that i've built during this time frame of course you should have looked to do something similar by this point in the game these are all the marketplaces that i built pretty much in all of the center of trade and estuary provinces there we go i got three more to put down in those provinces pretty much all of them which give me more than plus two improvement so to say then as we can see courthouses super 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 important to build i've built them in pretty much almost every available province with the exception of just some over here that we conquered from scotland recently and from england then of course workshops are super super important for building in all the high value trade good provinces such as iron copper cloth salt paper you get the point pretty much in every single province that gives you more than 0.2 to income per month of course churches are super super relevant as well i usually build them in every single province that gives me more than 0.1 income per month so i would build them in all of the provinces from this one down to here even though they become less relevant later on it's super important in the early game because look at this tax income so those are pretty much the buildings that are most relevant if you had the spare money of course you could have built some docks and some shipyards for certain missions that we need them a couple of barracks here and there for manpower and later on of course you're going to continue to build manufactories in all of the provinces that you have workshops in and that they have high value trade goods i usually build manufactories in every province that gives me more than 0.4 income per month although i would build them in these two provinces as well and other high value trade good provinces that i guess don't have workshops yet or haven't been developed that much and keep in mind that you should have also trade companied everything in the safi and tunis trade node except for this area or this province right here the gold mine in Tafila, which you should have devved up to 10 production. This is what my armies are looking like right now, 24, 4, 7, like I mentioned earlier. I have three stacks right now, but you could get by with two, honestly. I got 10 light ships protecting trade in the English Channel trade node, and this is my main sort of battle or transport fleet right here that I use to beat up some of the guys that I fight. Of course, you should have moved your capital over to the lowlands as well to avoid the Dutch revolt, and even though right now we're not making that much income from the English Channel trade node, once we conquer the entirety of England, once we upgrade all of these centers of trade, once we expand into the low countries even more that income will be super super nice transferring everything from over here over to the english channel and if you choose to colonize everything that you colonize in north america which is where your focus should be as france is going to get routed over to the english channel after this point you're going to continue expanding in the same directions we've already been expanding in Right now, in the first 100-ish years of the game, your focus is going to be the region of France, the region of Britain, the region of the Maghreb, and the region of Italy, along with the region of the Low Countries. So after you wrap up these five regions over here, you're free to expand elsewhere. You should definitely push into Iberia immediately after getting all of these or most of these regions done. And you should look to conquer the entirety of Iberia. If you were lucky, maybe you even got a PU on some of these 
guys over here in which case you should keep them around they'll colonize for you and annex them later on but you should definitely look to own directly the entirety of iberia and for your further goals as friends you should definitely aim to own all of the regions that i just mentioned directly for yourself and if you choose to expand in the hre definitely north and south germany if not you can go for the emperor's ship and keep these guys alive so pretty much the entirety of western and central europe right here along with the maghreb is what you should look down in a normal campaign as france in a massive blobbing campaign where you want to expand even more maybe form the roman empire as well then you should definitely go for these regions right here as well balkans anatolia egypt mashriq caucasia and other regions around them like that depending on your goals of course and as friends definitely don't forget to build up a bunch of the great projects that we have or that we're gonna have we did gain an event for 50 percent cheaper upgrades of the notre dame and versailles definitely look to upgrade both of these right here the tower of london is decent as well you could upgrade it as well the edinburgh castle is pretty nice as well you could take the palace of the popes all of the monuments over in italy are super nice and the ones in iberia you should pretty much be able to take advantage of all of these monuments over here with the exception of the holy city of cairo one but definitely focus on upgrading them after you've built all of the relevant buildings of course you should definitely have completed a big portion of the french mission tree by now and you could have chosen whether to go with the h HRE or non-HRE missions right here definitely continue to follow along with the French mission tree it is super super powerful focus on the northern expansion routes over here the Italian expansion the expansion over in Great Britain you definitely have some colonization missions as well and then the bottom missions down here which focus on improving your nation so definitely continue to follow along with the mission tree it's super super powerful one of the best in the game that gives you very very nice bonuses and modifiers this is what we took for our first two idea groups Diplo and Admin a classic opening for any mass of expansion campaign even if you're going colonial as france i still do not recommend exploration expansion for your first two idea groups you should definitely be focusing on these things before you focus on colonization if you do want to end up colonizing now is the time to take exploration and expansion so if you're going for the colonial route diplo admin exploration expansion if you're not going colonial i recommend taking other expansion or economic focused idea groups so for your third one in that case i would recommend trade influence or court trade if you want to make more money influence if you want to expand more court sort of balance between the two and for your fourth one you could definitely go with infrastructure humanist or religious once again stabilization and governance focused idea groups so diplo admin if colonial exploration expansion if not a diplo idea group one of these three here and then an admin idea group one of these three here and after that for your next four it's totally up to you you could definitely pick up some mill ones if you want to even though you don't really need mill idea groups at all in any campaign as france this is what we took for our first four government reforms for tier five. You do have a couple of unique ones, such as this one right here. It is pretty good. Definitely go with it if you find the bonuses interesting. The musketeers are pretty good as well. And this one is another unique one, which you can definitely take, although I don't think it is that good compared to these two. If you don't like these two, then you could definitely go with organized military staff or military engineering. For tier six, you should take aristocratic court while you're still playing with subjects. Later, when absolutism comes around, definitely flip to royal decree. For tier seven, you could definitely go with superior of the state which is another unique one if you take court ideas if not you can definitely go with meritocratic recruitment for tier 8 if you're colonizing exploitation of the new world is pretty good if you're not colonizing empower the burgers or embrace the economic theory for tier 9 the six books of the republic is really good along with leviathan if you're still playing with subjects or even the social contract if you're not taking religious or humanist ideas and then for tier 10 and tier 11 all of them are really good take whichever one you want at that point of the game you won't make a mistake with either one of them and like I said, around the time colonialism and the Protestant Reformation spawn, your realm should look a little something like this. If you're not that confident in your abilities, or if you're not sure if your game is going to go like mine, this save file is available for all YouTube members in the Save Games Discord channel, and you can continue playing as France from this state forward. Let me know in the comments below what's the next nation that I should do a guide on. If you enjoyed this video, don't hesitate to leave a like, it really helps out a lot, and if you like the content and want to see more videos like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of them, and you can become a member today, and join the Discord, the link is in the description. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time with another EU4 video.